Same-sex marriage is the latest battleground for many gay men and women, but it's easy to forget how far the gay rights movement has come since it emerged in the United States more than 40 years ago. Back then, a young Australian academic, Dennis Altman, was in New York and captured the sexual politics of the time in his controversial book, Homosexual Oppression and Liberation. In 1972, much of it was considered taboo in Australia. Now it's hailed as a milestone. To mark its 40th anniversary, the book is being re-released. Lisa Whitehead reports. Woodstock, Martin Luther King, Germaine Greer, Vietnam and Stonewall. Names and places etched in the collective memory of a time when free love reigned and fiery protest ignited the streets. In 1969, police raided Stonewall, a gay bar in New York. The ensuing riots spawned the first gay pride march in that city, and one young Sydney academic found himself in the thick of it. By accident, I had leave my first ever leave from university at the University of Sydney and I went to New York expecting to get involved in New York politics and I stumbled into the emerging gay liberation movement and then I decided I want to write a book about this. Professor Dennis Altman returned to Australia and wrote Homosexual, Oppression and Liberation in 1972. It still ranked as one of the most influential books about homosexuality. It got reviewed in the mainstream press, things like Time magazine, New York Times reviewed it. It's a book that people rushed out to get, which in those days didn't mean getting onto Amazon with your credit card. I mean, getting a money order and finding the publisher's address in New York and writing off for it. But some sections of the Australian media didn't embrace it in the same way. There were some odd remnants of the traditional Australian wowserism and the clearest case, I think, was the Sydney Morning Herald, uh, where, whose uh, book people had commissioned a review that was pulled at the last minute. The State Tonight also commissioned a story which was pulled at managerial level. Another ABC program, Monday Conference, did go where others feared to tread. You're attacking more than violence, oh, you're sure. attacking the family. And... Sure. Well, no, I'm not attacking the family as such. I'm attacking a concept which is that there is only one possible form of human happiness, and that is the heterosexual nuclear family. Professor Altman's book is an analysis of the sexual politics of the period, as well as a personal account of his liberation as a gay man. If you could explain what coming out means in your terms. The process of coming out openly, that is of saying, I'm no longer going to lead the double life that most homosexuals lead. I'm no longer going to pretend that I am in fact straight. Professor Altman's public profile brought with it an element of personal risk, according to historian Dr Graham Willett. People were victimised, you know, Catholic schools sacking their teachers. Uh, it was still illegal to engage in homosexual sex for men. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of dangers around. Heterosexuality is part of normal biosocial development, where homosexuality is always the result of a disordered sexual development. Well... That, to me, is plain nonsense. So much passion around the war and conscription. Dennis Altman, who's 67, says it's easy to forget how dramatically things have changed. 20 years ago, for example, I would never have predicted that we could have an openly lesbian finance minister who, with her partner, could be having a child and that this would be taken for granted. And I think that is a mark of just how much things have changed. It wasn't just a matter of society evolving or of some gentle education work. People really had to fight and fight hard and people paid a price for that. Professor Altman supports the current campaign for same-sex marriage, but he says it's not a priority for him. He wants to see action to address other issues facing young gay men and women. There are still kids out there who, for whatever reason, feel totally alone, suicidal, unable to talk to anyone, are being told that they're perverted, that they're sinners, whatever. And increasingly, our school systems have a larger and larger proportion of religious schools, many of which are fundamentalist, um, of all sorts. 
uh, which runs counter to what I think some of the state education departments have genuinely tried to do in dealing with homophobia in schools. Christos Cholkis is best known as the author of the phenomenally successful book The Slap. At this event in Melbourne celebrating queer culture, he's treating the audience to a sneak preview of his latest work. His mother ignores him. His first political science essay at university in the early 80s was a critique on Dennis Altman's book. I feel gratitude, a huge debt that arises from that generation of queer activists, that um, Dennis Altman was at the forefront um, of actually fighting the battles that actually made it so much easier for me to come out as a gay man. Christos Cholkis says the re-release of Dennis Altman's book is a reminder that he and other activists of his generation were agents for change. I hope Dennis doesn't get offended by this, but I mean it really... I think it's really important to, uh, to recognise and respect the elders. Um, it doesn't matter which community you feel part of, that, that we are not isolated in history. So how does it feel now to be the elder statesman, if I can call you that, of, of the gay rights movement? I don't like the elder bit. <laughs> Look, um, I, I have mixed feelings about it. I, I think that no one person or no small group of people make a movement. Movements succeed because large numbers of people do lots of different things. And when we're successful, we're successful because somehow we manage to catch the tide at the right moment and to ride it in.